for fifteen to sixteen hundred bucks a month. Really? Each one of these mobile ho- or manufactured so homes. It's like a manufactured tiny house. No, it's a not nice size. Tiny. No, it's a nice square feet. Yeah, well, not, not that big. That Maybe fifteen, sixteen okay. hundred. But but pre manufactured. Yeah. And they got wow. a system down. The only ra- way it works, the only yes. reason it works, yes. is that he buys all these, buy all yes. these as a discount. Okay. He's got the truck, the system. Okay. They get the land. Oh, they, that would help the housing crisis, but where, but the where numbers we were running were incredible. Oh, the returns. The co- yeah, when you look because at the, the cost cash flow, of, is that it's positive yeah. cash flow almost right mm-hmm. off the bat? Wow. Okay. Just interesting. Yeah. Are we ready? Great. I'm ready. <clears throat> Am I going to be on talking about the farmhouses there? In the <laughs> okay. Oh, you are? <laughs> oh, another, well. Another great oh, investment. There, there it goes. <laughs> Welcome in. Joe Kachar with Real Estate Radio Live as we wind down the week here. Uh, just a reminder, for more information, you could tune in to reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. If you want to reach me during the week, it's 408-838-9060. Most of you know, for over seven years now, the focus has been education and information. We continue to do that. I'd like to think that we continue to build the value here at Real Estate Radio Live. One example here is Mr. Jack Russo is with us again today. Jack, good to have you back. Thank you. We're trying every week or so. depends on the schedule. Jack is the managing partner with the computer, um, computer law group in uh, Palo Alto. Our topic is uh, starting something in Silicon Valley. This is this is uh, number five, I believe, we're going to revisit today, right? Is it, we're gonna five, is it five or six? I think it's five, it's five, right, Ron? Five. Yeah, so it's five. five. We're going to revisit in the, uh, the pros and cons of the entity I think we're going to talk about today. Right. Um, there's a lot there's a lot going on in Silicon Valley, so we're going to continue this series. It's been very popular. For those tuning in on Facebook, thank you for following. Thank you for commenting. Continue to do so. But again, uh, remember to download the podcast. That's where you can follow the show and then listen to all the past shows if you could get caught up that way as well. Before we get started, as usual, Jack, you want to give our listeners just a quick update sure. or background, I should say, sure. and then we yeah. could jump into our topic. Sure. Jack Russo, managing partner, computer law group. We're in Palo Alto, California, footsteps away from Stanford University off of University Avenue. We also have offices in San Francisco, though we really see ourselves as Silicon Valley lawyers. A lot of the millennials are wanting to be in San Francisco, so you have to yeah. cater to their schedule, which we do. And so the phone number is 650-327-9800. The website is computerlaw.com, and the email is jack at computerlaw. And I thought, I actually re-listened to a couple of the podcasts, and I thought what was not clear, and we should make it clear, Mm -hmm. is that people today, if they're starting something, they typically want to start something that looks real from the get-go that Mm -hmm. is the days are over when the vcs would do the work of starting the legal and paint that's over that just doesn't happen anymore they wait till you have some true customer cash flow that they can talk to and due diligence and say this is going to work the dogs are eating the dog food they are happy so that means you have to make a choice about a business entity and there are lots of choices and it's very hard a lot of people do it. A lot of mistakes get made. They go to legal Zoom mm-hmm. and they get some prepackaged choice. And we could talk about the pros and cons of that. It's it's certainly something to think about. But remember, you're pretty far down the road of thinking your idea is going to work, and you've prototyped it. You've done hopefully some testing. Mm-hmm. You've done some competitive analysis because you might be building the mousetrap that's already out there in Walmart right. that you cannot possibly compete against. And yeah. what I brought in is a prop because it plays into the point I'm going <laughs> to make about shielding yourself from liability is someone referred to me the future of the umbrella. Now, you would have thought an umbrella could not possibly be perfected yeah, to a right. better degree. Well, they created something called the Inside Out, and the brand name is Better Brella, yeah. B-E-T-T-E-R, Brella. And it's sort this of is on being advertised on TV already. I yeah, think, so, yeah, so what they yeah. did is they di- they kind of, I'll put it up here, and even though it's probably bad luck to do it, I won't do it all the way. <laughs> the umbrella <laughs> opens up in reverse, and I have no I have no stake in these guys. I mean, I, I, I bought this umbrella, and the reason I bought it is it's a reverse way yeah, of opening. So you see, it sort of goes the opposite approach. And uh-huh. then when it's wet, as it is today, because is the reason I have it, yep. you can shake it out 
and it kind of shakes out the rain and doesn't come because this is dry, mm -hmm. right? So the water, so it actually is better. So now they probably would have filed a provisional patent application. Right. Of course, I got to keep it closed now. They probably would have gotten their trademark intent to use registration done. Mm -hmm. They probably would have gotten some marketing materials generated. And then they have to figure out how are they doing distribution. And mm -hmm. so the second prop I brought in is no one could have believed that a toothbrush would be improved, but these guys quip, and they're doing a lot of advertising. It's Q-U-I-P, made a smaller. So what's the principal difference The there? principal difference here is you've got a simple, replaceable brush oh. that's delivered okay. monthly oh. on subscription with I toothpaste. I love it. With toothpaste. So – you're always going to have a yeah. fresh brush. Right. They got the cost down to peanuts. And if you buy it in subscription for a year and you use it and you use it more regularly because you could take it with mm -hmm. you to work, which a lot of people don't do because it's too big. This is actually pretty small. I, I have it inside the holder, but you could just put it in your pocket. As I, Again, these are folks I don't know, but presumably they got their design done and they got their packaging done. And they got their provisional patent file. Right. They got their materials registered with the copyright office if they mm -hmm. think they might be copied there. They do all the IP stuff. And then the question becomes, what's the business that's right. actually going to yeah. be the vessel for collecting the money that's going to come in? So how does – yeah, when you get to that point and you're ready to decide – how do you go about? Is there? A, how right. do you go about trying to figure out right. what is the best form right. of doing? Yeah. Right. So let's start with the extremely yeah. dumb things that some people okay. do, and then they get burnt. All right. I don't really need a lawyer, and I don't really need a corporation, and I don't really need an entity. I'm just going to do the sole yeah. proprietor. Pick what does that? What does yeah. that represent? It's the opposite yeah. of having an umbrella. Right. It's the opposite of having protection. Right. <clears throat> if there's a lawsuit because someone pokes their eye with that umbrella, or someone breaks a gum with the with the toothbrush mm -hmm. or something dangerous happens, although these are not highly dangerous products, you are individually liable mm -hmm. for the tort that's committed or for the violation that's uh, alleged or proven. It's also difficult to hire an employee. You can hire the employee, but you're personally liable for mm -hmm. that employee's salary, benefits, and the rest. Now, there are people that run businesses out of sole proprietorships. They do. So a lot of service businesses have historically been run out yeah. of sole proprietorships. Mm -hmm. They get a business name that they publish, which is called a DBA, doing right. business as. The publication happens in a newspaper of a certain size. And there's a little box, and you'll often see it saying, notice, this person is right. doing business as a right. sole proprietor. And they have a name that's called a fictitious name, but mm -hmm. there's no entity protection. There's nothing that stops a lawsuit against them. There's nothing that will prevent an ex-employee or a mm -hmm. fired employee from filing a wrongful termination case. So that person's going to have individual liability. Now, it gets... Even worse, if you imagine what I just described, another way that's wrong to do business, and in fact, this was the original formation of Apple, was as a general partnership. Hmm. The lawyers didn't make the mistake. Jobs and Wozniak made the mistake. Literally, they didn't go to legal right away. They actually started their little you know, homebrew, go out to show what they had at these trade shows as – there were three partners that mm. had literally a general partnership. If you go back to the history, they had a guy who's viewed himself as a co-founder. I don't know if they fully agreed with it. But essentially, there were three of them in a partnership, a general partnership, which meant if Jobs was driving to a trade show for the purpose of showing the device and gets into a car accident, Wozniak and the other guy are jointly and severally liable yeah. for the tort. Yeah, And let's say he's driving a car that has no insurance, mm -hmm. possible, maybe even probable back in those days because yeah. they didn't have much money. Well, at the end of the day, there's liability for each of the three right. of those partners. Right. And any one of those partners could also cause liability to the other two. So yeah. it expands the liability, multiplies the liability. So whenever you see a team that's in formation right. – the sole proprietor cannot possibly be the right model right. because the general partnership is not the right model. So that you immediately limit then, in your own mind, 
one of two choices, either a limited liability company called okay. an LLC mm -hmm. or a corporation. And there's flavors for each of these things. And what's important to realize is that that entity to be creating a separate personhood because it literally is a separate person or a, a separate being has to have some real capitalization. Yeah. Now, what's Silicon Valley has thrived on the view that the capitalization can be simple assignment of the intellectual property mm -hmm. rights into that entity. And that's one way to capitalize a company. I don't have much cash. I came up with the idea. I'm right. just making this up. I'm not the inventor. Mm -hmm. I came up with the idea of the inside outside umbrella. I got the design done. I got the provisionals patents filed. I got the trademarks uh, registered or intent to use registrations. I got various copyright materials registered. I did an assignment agreement into, let's take the simplest version, into what might be a single member limited liability okay. company. Now, the benefit of that is I now have the shield of that company. Right. So I can hire employees and feel confident mm -hmm. that if I run that correctly, I will not have individual liability to right. those employees. I can also feel confident that if I want to take money, let's take a loan, mm -hmm. and there's no guarantee, <coughs> right. assuming there's no guarantee, I can have the <coughs> LLC sign the loan agreement and get the loan, mm. and just the LLC is liable and not me personally. Okay. Now, whether someone will make that loan or not That's a different might story. be a different story, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Now, <coughs> now, let me branch to a couple of other things because people want to know, well, what are the benefits of LLC versus corporation? Right. And, and, <clears throat> and there are benefits to a corporation, which is oftentimes the incentive that people want to use with others. Let's call it the team or even let's call it the advisory board or maybe even a person mm -hmm. or persons becoming board members right. of the corporation. There's a way more easily to create what's called a stock option mm -hmm in the corporation that the IRS blesses as working for the benefit of the employees or the contractors okay. that get it versus <clears throat> today, and this may change over time, today it's not as easy to construct a way to have an option for the purchase of an LLC stake. I see. So we have lots of historical rules on what are called incentive stock mm -hmm. options under a section of the Internal Revenue Code and that often becomes the currency for getting people to help. Mm. So let's say you're, you're not good, and some people are, at doing your own website. And you want a website that's going to start to sell this toothbrush or start to sell these umbrellas. You want to go to someone that might take a stake mm -hmm. in the company through a stock option. Right. They're not a voting share member. They don't get to go to shareholder meetings. They really can't do things to make your life miserable because mm -hmm. they don't have shareholder rights, right. but they have a right that's vesting over time based so they on use services. Their, so they use their expertise and services in lieu of the stock or the... That's right. Yeah, right. That's right. So the option represents for them, I have no liability. I haven't paid right. in right. capital. I've simply given some services. I got the option and it vests based perhaps on some additional services over time. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it'll be worth something. Now, the truth is it might not be, or they may say, yeah. I don't even want to exercise the option because I don't believe in it enough mm -hmm. to put more cash into it. So you'll get these situations, and we see them happen, particularly when the stocks, the, the company doesn't do, go, do so well. There might be a lot of options that are granted based mm -hmm. on a reservation of shares that represents that pool of maybe 10 or 15% of yeah. the capital structure. But the various people that have the options all disappear. They don't exercise. Right, right. So really there was a no-cost transaction mm. for that help. Right. It's kind of a bit of a magic of Silicon Valley that people will take the risk right. and provide help hoping that you will get finance. But if you don't get finance and the business doesn't take off and the toothpaste doesn't sell and the toothbrush don't sell yeah. – then at least the net result is it's not like you're having to pay <laughs> those true. people, right? So so if uh, your recommendation would be if someone's really – they think they're starting a true company where they're going to need good, they're going to need services, let's say web development, marketing, internet. I mean, if you're going to legal services, 
this is probably someone that should form a corporation versus an LLC. Right. Generally speaking, if you're if you're doing something that's distributing products, okay, and there's a desire to have employees, the bias is in favor of a corporation okay. over an LLC. Now there are people that say, no, why don't you start? even more simple because LLCs technically don't have as many corporate rules about mm-hmm. holding meetings, right. having minutes, keeping a minute book. LLCs can have a simple operating agreement that says we're simply going to have a meeting if we even desire to have one once a year to right. report to the members how good was the gain <clears throat> or how bad was the loss and then to issue some K-1s if it's treated as a right. partnership. You could actually have an LLC that's treated as a corporation. It's just that the law of LLCs in California, in Delaware, in elsewhere, and I think the first state to have it was Wyoming. Literally, they came up with this concept was, we don't want people to get bogged down in paperwork. We want to keep it simple. And so even today, people will ask, what's the better approach between, say, California versus Nevada versus Delaware? And there are trade-offs. And the question becomes, well, if you're staying in California – and you're operating in California, and your employees and you are going to be in California, you and you're not going to take investor right. money, so Delaware is not as important from the sort of trademark mm-hmm. point of view, you file as a California LLC and try to keep the cost down. Now, if you're taking money where, say, the investor, like might even be an overseas investor, who says, well, Delaware has a better set of corporate laws and corporate judiciary They understand things better. We'd like to invest Mm -hmm. in a Delaware entity. You might be biased in favor of having a Delaware filing for the LLC. All of these states, by the way, are are going online. So you you get the same benefits of filing online. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we're going to come back. So stick with us on Facebook. Uh, We'll continue to stream live as we do every time we do the show. Today we're talking about the pros and cons of an entity. Which one should you form? Is it an LLC? Is it a corporation? We talked about the dangerous, uh, the sole proprietorship, which is not a good idea. Not a good idea. (laughs) Not a good idea. All right, stick with us. We'll be back in about a minute. We'll continue to show. Thank you. Yeah, I was looking if I had another one of these to give you, and I thought one had been delivered, but I don't. But I'll get you one of these to see whether you like it or not because I've started using uh, it's it's kind of the future of toothbrushes. (laughs) Over a year ago, I'm. I have Harry's delivered to my house now, the razor. The razor, right. I thought it was ingenious, and I thought, well, why is this so – and here I am giving good advertising yeah, on Facebook Harry's. for Harry's, Harry, right? So for those Harry thinking, should love you. Joe, thank you for shaving, <laughs> at least for showing up, and maybe you look halfway decent. <laughs> of, That's course, funny. Of, of course, Harry's is fighting the view that a lot of millennials don't shave. That's a good point. I mean, they shave like, well, you know, once a week, and, you know, they'll say – they'll tell you. You know, you got to shave like once a week because if you shave more often than that, you're ruining your skin. Oh, like they think funny. somehow, I mean, this goes along the lines like, well, maybe you shouldn't even shower more than <laughs> once a week because your your body oils, <laughs> your body oils rejuvenate in your skin. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, there are different there are different views, and I think the funniest part we're on Facebook is. The new uniform at work is kind of a hoodie and jeans or a hoodie yeah, and right. slacks. And the women in my office, the lawyers in my office are like, you know, part of what we live for in being in a professional practice is people get dressed up yeah. every day. Most people do. But if you work for Facebook and we have some friends who work there, they're like, no, you know, you don't get dressed up. That right. would really call you out as something right. bad. And even the lawyers in Facebook don't get dressed up. Wow. And even the senior lawyers, like there's a federal judge that went over to Facebook, and he's certainly not dressing like a judge anymore. He's used his flip-flops that's and his right. jeans that's on. That's right. <clears throat> and I guess the, the, the thing that Zuckerberg said was, well, it helps you not have to make more decisions. And there's a theme there, and the theme is, Millennials don't want to have to make additional decisions beyond whatever decision-making they're right. making online. <laughs> you with me? Yeah. Like the delivery of the toothbrush don't, and the don't toothpaste. Don't push my capacity. Exactly. Don't, <laughs> don't push me to think about remembering to buy that at the I Safeway. Like yeah. D- just deliver you know, it to me on a subscription basis. A <laughs> exactly. This is good. Should we get started again, yeah. Ronnie, or should we continue our well, comedy show we're, here? Where's a comedy show, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> it's a comedy show. All right, show. we'll officially, unofficially get going again. Here we go. Are we official? Okay. All back. right, officially, we're welcoming you back, although uh, Jack and I try to do our best during the commercial breaks here. <laughs> to I'm, provide uh, <laughs> some comedy. <laughs> yeah. This is Real Estate Radio Live, believe it or not, and we're providing education and information to a certain extent, different things. We have Jack Russo with us today, as we do, usually once a week if we can, depending on the schedule. Uh, he's the managing partner for the Computer Law Group in Palo Alto. The topic is ongoing, and it's part five of starting something new in Silicon Valley. Today, we're talking a little bit about the pros and cons of the entity. We discussed the entity, Jack, a few weeks ago, and now you really want to kind of compartmentalize it and break it down and, like, you know what are the what are the pros and cons of it? And we just started that. So, in the in our follow up segment here, um, you want to continue on that? Some of the differences, right? I want to get into. There is a simple way, and millennials want simple, and I'd like simple too. To think that LegalZoom and there's four or five other companies that do this can allow a press button approach mm -hmm. to doing it. I can tell you, I have seen so many cases often after litigation is filed, which makes it even worse, where what happened was simply defective from the start. Mm -hmm. And I'm not really here to sell our services because uh, as a corporate startup firm, although we do a lot of corporate startups, our focus tends to be strategic IP, how right. to get ready to be in the best position to make that intellectual property as mm -hmm. valuable as possible. We see so many situations where the entity was not correctly selected or correctly documented mm -hmm. over and over again. And often the worst version of that is when there's an internal squabble between the shareholders or the LLC members, mm -hmm. and there was a <clears throat> failure to think through very simple things like, hey, what happens if one of us dies? Now, LegalZoom's right. not going to cover a buy-sell agreement. Right. They're not going to cover a stock option plan. They're not going to cover a advanced idea which there are many and i mentioned one which is why don't we put some of these shares at a very low value mm -hmm. early shares into a roth ira for our grandson mm -hmm. because if those shares turn out to be worth a lot like ebay was became or like mm -hmm. facebook became can you imagine if zuckerberg right. had the Impressions, maybe he did. Maybe he d maybe had good advice. I kind of doubt it because it certainly hasn't surfaced. That he said, "Well, I'm going to put some of the early Facebook shares when the valuation was relatively low into a Roth IRA, and maybe a family member's Roth IRA, mm -hmm. and now that huge gain is all tax free uh -huh. for that particular stake in Facebook." Now, you have to do the valuation correctly because a Roth IRA has limits. Mm -hmm. You have to get the Pensco or other right, outside right. custody <clears throat> custodian account. Right. But there is ways to do that kind of smart planning, mm -hmm. and it doesn't get done in the simple push-button approach no. because it's too sophisticated. No, it's just there's too much. And you're, so someone like LegalZoom, and there's a few others out there, I would agree 100%. Most of them boilerplate or maybe kind of off the shelf or off the – you know, type of, they're not going to get into the detail that you're talking about. They're not going to get into the detail. And what they're not <coughs> going to do is going to give you a more customized view of what you have to be ready to anticipate. So when you're starting a business with another, what would otherwise be a co-partner, mm -hmm. that person could eventually become adverse. And this is what lawyers are trained to think about. No push button service is trained to think about, well, what happens if you guys end up disagreeing? Do yeah. you have a mechanism? Do you have a way to allow one person to buy the other out? Do you have a way to think through how to set a valuation for that buyout? Do you have an arbitration clause or an appraisal clause that will simplify it? Do you have a, a, a way to think about we've settle this in yeah. paperwork. I don't want to call it a prenuptial agreement because no, it shouldn't be There's so that much way. that could go on. There's a lot. Death, disabled, right. divorce. There's a lot. Right? I there's mean, there's a lot that can go on. What, there's if, a lot. what if another guy's crooked? That's what right. if your What if your partner all of a sudden right. you find out that he's got a warrant of his arrest? And It, it right? happens. <laughs> I mean, I, I could tell a story. I, I, you know, knock on wood that this didn't happen to me. I, I, I invested in a company and we, we did it out of the fund and they ran into some trouble, and they called me up, and they said, you know, we're, we're in some trouble, and all the board members are disappearing, and wow. just just us left. By the way, would you join our board of directors? <laughs> and, of course, I had to say, look, you know, 
lawyers don't like taking board positions. You guys are on the East Coast. I'm here in California. I'm not really able to know. Well, sure enough, you know, a few months later, I find out there's a major, major fight where wow. inevitably lawsuits end up getting filed. Sued, yeah. And guess who would have been sued yeah. but for the grace of God that I didn't take that <laughs> position? And you have to counsel people about if you're going to be on the board, there are certain fiduciary duties mm -hmm. that attach. You have to think about whether you want to have a lot of clarity that, hey, is there DNO insurance? Mm -hmm. That's an extra burden for a startup to get directors and officers right. liability insurance. You could also get it for an LLC, although, frankly, the carriers are not as used to writing policies for LLCs as they are for corporations. Yeah. And that's another factor to think about because yeah. if you're taking money and you're taking big money from investors, so I'll give you another case, another startup. As I said in previous shows, this whole cryptocurrency mm -hmm. area is completely off to the races. And we had a client that came in and said, you know, I'm starting essentially a fund to mm -hmm. deal with cryptocurrencies. Where do I do it? How do I do it? And the first question I asked is, okay, how much are you going to have in this fund? He says, I don't know, maybe like $4 billion, billion with a B. Remember, those are yeah. big dollars. Well, where is it coming from? Oh, a sovereign fund in overseas, you know, somewhere in, in right. Egypt, let's say, because there's a lot of money there. Right. And they want to be in they cryptocurrencies, wanna, yeah, right. and they have no expertise, right. right? So then the issue that comes up is, well, how does that get structured? How do you make sure you're protected? How do you make sure that, because cryptocurrencies are inherently volatile, that oh, $4 yeah. billion can yeah. become, right. you know, a fraction of it, right. or it could become three exit. Obviously, yeah. in the best case, if you can have this wild imagination that it's going to be great, you imagine that that money is going to come in, it's going to get invested, it's going to be able to get returned. Mm -hmm. And so it's only the house's money that's being right. played with. And then you're sort of bulletproof because you're saying to the investor, look, I got you your money back. Yeah. Now we're just at the roulette wheel yeah. I think with the, the house's money. The message uh, that I'm hearing loud and clear is that if you're going <laughs> to – if you're going to have a company and you think it's going to do something or you're going to put a lot of money, resources, and time and energy to it, do it right. Get the Choose the right entity, number one. Number two, use a legitimate attorney or a firm to help you draft that and draw those up, right? That's the message because, again, do you want to invest all your time, energy, and then potentially bring other people in and make them subject to some of these issues that could come up if you don't? And the way I think about it is if you are reluctant to see – a professional or maybe several because you might want to be talking to your CPA at the same time mm -hmm. or getting a CPA. If you're just inherently reluctant, that probably says something about your belief in the value of the idea. I agree. Now, that's a funny statement because no, that's a good point, it's though. a way to say, look, if you're going to go fishing and you're really going to go to fish for some really mm -hmm. big fish, right? you're probably not going to refuse to buy some decent bait right. you're probably not going to go on you know a little rowboat because mm -hmm. you're never going to catch any right. fish doing that now some people do they just go and throw their line in you know off the side of the golden gate bridge and they mm -hmm. kind of hope that something happens the odds are nothing's going to happen right. and if you're so reluctant that you're not really thinking that way you probably need to go back to that notebook Mm -hmm. And ask yourself, why am I being reluctant here to take some of my savings? That's why, by the way, the professional will look at the degree to which you're in, whether you have skin in the game. Yeah. And if you're particularly asking the lawyer, and lots of lawyers, including us, are entrepreneurial to defer and discount fees and do stuff mm -hmm. that helps your cash flow. Right. If you're reluctant to show that you have skin in the game, that professional is going to say to you, you're not real. Yeah. You don't have skin in the game. You're not really interested. You're sort of doing something fictional. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are people that do stuff that's fictional because, you know, perhaps their spouse says, why don't you get a job? And they're like, you know, <laughs> I, I, met a, I met a woman last what, what night. What do you mean a job? I met, last night there was a woman <laughs> that said, yeah, my, 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 my husband is an entrepreneur. I really should say 
he's a stay-at-home dad. <laughs> but, you know, he's got these great ideas. Nothing ever happens. He's a practicing, right? Practicing and, entrepreneur. And she said, yeah, I'm the breadwinner, and I guess that's abnormal. But, you know, he's, he says the next thing. The, the next, next big thing. The next big thing is going to happen. <laughs> I keep waiting. I said, how long have you been married? Well, we got three kids. I'm planning to put them through college. I guess we were married about 12 years. <laughs> Well, here's a lesson I'll tell you before we finish up today, and this is this is a lot of good information because Jack has lived it, I have lived it. Matter of fact, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about some projects we're working on and a number of different things. But I think the other message is this is a lot of work, right? I mean, it sounds fun and sexy and Silicon Valley and billions of dollars being thrown around, but if you decide to come up with a product or a service and idea, be prepared to work, number one. Be prepared right? to work and be prepared <laughs> to hear the bad news yes. that what you said right. is not going to work. Right. So, I mean, we don't know if this Quip <clears throat> thing is going to work right. for this toothbrush. And we don't know if the umbrella. Right. There might, my mom would be like, who needs that? I buy it from Walmart. That's a $14 right. umbrella. I can get something for three forty nine. dollars We don't know where things will land but you have to be ready to take the good with the bad and what i often say and this scares people starting a business is like deciding to go on a journey where you're going to take a hundred thousand steps now i'm good on a particular hiking day to maybe get to twenty thousand mm -hmm. steps but a hundred thousand steps is like a five-day journey yeah, right. right that's a that's a serious thing now that's probably even a trivialized way mm -hmm. of saying you are going on a major mission. And if you're not committed to go on that mission, then you should not be doing it. And I remember at one point, and I'll just tell this final yeah. story because you'll get a kick out of it. I remember when I decided to leave, as I said, a great law firm, still love them, uh, Fenwick & West, David Stafford, Kelman & Fenwick was what it was <coughs> when I joined. They're now a really big firm. I still see Bill Fenwick, one of the, and Joel Kelman last week was in the office. Some of the founders and mm -hmm. Blake Stafford's a good friend. And, you know, of course, Wes died, so people get yeah. old, right? So when I left, I remember, you know, of course, they said, no, you can't leave, stay, da, yeah. da, da, da. And I remember people saying, you know, there aren't really a lot of people that will jump out of the airplane without a parachute, but Jack is one of those guys. <laughs> now, I had done a bit of planning and thinking about it, but I was not certain it was going to work. I hear you. And yeah. I had to, and of course, I had no money. I yeah. remember I asked my mom for a loan. She was like, all my money's tied up in real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. So I was lucky enough to get an angel client yeah. who actually the firm didn't want. They were like glad to give them up who said, yeah, you know, tell me, you know, tell me what you need and make sure you take care of me. And uh, the, wow. rest, the rest is history. I could tell lots of stories yeah. about them and, and the entrepreneur that ran that business. But the short and long of it was I was ready to, to take all my savings and basically – Bet make, on yourself. And bet on right. myself. And right. if I had to fail, if yeah. that had happened, right. I would just go crawling back to some other law firm probably, although I might have gone back there. <laughs> I mean, it's – you know, lawyers who are good can always find something to do. There's no question about that. Well, I, I believe that anybody that's good at any service or, you know, industry I, – I'm just my belief, if you truly have – I mean, if you need to work and you need to make an income, you need to feed – I mean, I've always said somehow, some way, right, if you need to put food on the table, right. pay your rent, whatever, right. put a roof right. over your head, however right. you want to look at it, you make it happen. I think you make it happen. Right? What, what I'm finding that's interesting, <laughs> just I was thinking as you were saying those things, I'm seeing more and more people who are saying, you know, people who are in Silicon Valley are very driven. Hmm. And there are a lot of people getting older that are saying, you know, maybe it's time to leave. Hmm. So this signal of of – Peter Thiel moving yeah. to Los Angeles. Of course, the <laughs> subtext is he's moving to Los Angeles, but he actually got rights to live in New Zealand. So really? his plan B, and a lot of wealthy people's plan B, if we pollute this part of the world, New Zealand yeah. may be unpolluted. <laughs> like, New Zealand may be the protected zone. But the point that you're making is absolutely true. You have to be committed because, you know what, everyone else around you is also committed Absolutely. and they may represent competition and the race is on and if there is a good idea around a toothbrush or an umbrella mm -hmm. there are going to be a lot of other people that are working on a similar or maybe even better idea well yeah and we're, we're going to have to duck out in a minute but the, uh, the i won't say the last thing because we're going to continue this conversation yeah. the other thing that comes to mind as you mentioned that is 
you had better be ready and demonstrate that you're ready because guess what? If you're asking other people to come around you and put their time, services, and money in, guess who they're looking at too, right? That's right. Absolutely. As we so said you, had better, <laughs> you had better be ready. You better be ready, <laughs> and you better be ready to say you're the leader, right. you have a team, you're in the right market, yeah. you, you've got a plan. Yeah. All right. Right before we duck out, Jack, again, remind uh, those that want to contact you where they could reach you. Uh, Jack at computerlaw.com is probably the easiest, but the phone is 650-327-9800. Great. Thanks. All right, thanks for tuning Great. in. Next Thank week you. we'll be back. We're not sure what day, but I think we're going to visit uh, some of the financing, how to get some of the money, the venture capital. We're going to get into that and much, much more. Again, for more information, go to reradiolive.com. Thanks for checking in with us today. Tech Tear. Till next time. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, it was good. say it goes so fast it feels it like does. you're in a